Molly Croft, Molly Croft, Molly Molly Croft. I just love saying that word Molly Croft now. And now that my Molly Croft is complete, I'm now moving on to the front and back walls and eventually I'll do something with this bedroom divider. And as you can see, I've now revealed my two gypsy windows that I bought on Marketplace. And I've decided the long one is fixed, as you can see. And the short one, I want the bedroom to be able to have some airflow. So, now of course it's just below the fixed window. But I do need it up high because the bed itself is up reasonably high. Probably at the bottom of the screen there. You'll be lying down, yeah, maybe just a bit below the bottom of the screen. But the bed has to be up that high because I'm going to have out here... Yeah, the cows are mooing. Because out here in the lounge room, the one room, kitchen, lounge and all that kind of business, I'm going to have a pull-out dining table uh, that can be pushed back in out of the way underneath the bed and so I've got to set that at roughly you know standard dining table height and then the bed has to be above that and so with this window I'd like to have some ventilation so I'm thinking at first I thought a couple of uh, push pins on either side that you would uh, pull out but that'd be too difficult now I'm just thinking a piano hinge along the bottom and just allowing it to drop out and allow some airflow to come through. So there won't be any actual window jam. I think I'll just use this sill plate here as my window jam. Fix the piano hinge to that. But I will route this outside on a slope so that if any water does hit, I think it's well protected. It'd have to be extreme sideways rain to come in and hit here. But if any did, it would just run off. So I'll do a routing, uh, like a 45 degree route on that side. That'll take care of that. And on the inside, I'll basically, rather than have, uh, you know, window stock or door stock for the frame to come up against, I'll overhang the internal lining board all the way around, just enough so that it basically closes in tight on that and that'd be it at least that way I'll get to uh, have some open ventilation in the bedroom for those warm nights and that's the back wall No time like the present.
Well, we're having a extreme cold front coming through, calling for snow on the Alps. And one of these days, apparently snow down to 600 metres. We're still lower than that, but wouldn't it be great to see snow here? So just in time, I got it all wrapped. Apparently this isolation is around about a 1.3 R value. So by the time I put some insulation in the walls and foil board in the ceiling, that's all I'm going to be able to fit up there. I think it'll do pretty well. It's probably the first quasi-traditional gypsy wagon to ever be insulated like this underfloor, ceiling, walls. Not the first gypsy wagon build, but going by traditional means, I mean. At the moment, it just looks like a big ugly blue box. But I'm essentially watertight, which is great. So now the next step is to clad it. And that's going to be a major change. There's still many more things I have to seek out and find. Basically of a decorative nature for the external. And I think I remember in part one saying something along the lines of that I won't be going overboard with the flamboyance. But as I've gone on, I'm heading more towards a flamboyance. But it still remains to be seen what this end product is going to look like. But, I could literally camp in this now and stay dry. Because I'm still a little bit unsure of exactly what's going to be the internal lining of this. Therefore I don't really know the thickness of whatever that's going to be. And so I can't really fit my windows at the moment. Obviously I want to get the outside clad then I'll know what thickness I'm dealing with there. And then once I zero in on a internal lining, I'll know what thickness that is. And then I'll know the measurement of what my window frame should be. It's coming along.
That's my slide out dining table, essentially set up. And I really like the curved nature as it pulls out and away from you, which makes it a great, uh, keep the table in place, it makes it a great, more space for exiting the table. Not so much for the single person who will sit on the other side. May have to be slid back in for them to get out, but that's fine. I'm just going on the premise of, you know, one person really. I'm currently out at about 850 millimeters. I can come out further. And that's about it really before I, um, you know, bump into anything. Uh, and I can also reduce it if I want to. Keep it out of the way a little bit. It's a little bit stiff at one point, but I've kind of done it all really tight and stiff because I believe the the carpet may flatten a little bit over time and things will loosen up but it makes for a very solid uh, table with no support leg that may come in the future but at the moment I don't think it needs it That window was quite the challenge. As I've said, I've uh, set it up so it just closes in on the overhanging internal wall lining. And that's looking pretty good, I think. The curve on the outside was the hard part. I ended up uh, buying a piece of, from a plaster supplies place, PVC arch lining, or PVC arch bead and I was able to curve that around the window but I had to do a whole heap of packing at varying levels because basically I didn't overhang my outside lining board and cut the curve out of that but anyway I worked it out and now I can basically just hold a piece of timber up to that curve trace it and then I'll have on the outside an architrave and so I'll be able to paint the white PVC thing on the inside and then I'll have a nice decorative trim on the outside. And then I've just got to come up with a little latch that I can attach to the window, pull it in and latch it off tight to the internal lining. So I bought this lounge room, living room, TV cabinet and storage suite very very cheaply from a thrift store. I'm going to try and repurpose some of this part of this as my full length pull out drawer underneath my table which is also underneath my bed and see how that works. And it's all good high quality stuff so I'm not sure 
what else I can use here but uh, this is why I buy this stuff it's really cheap and it's got great repurpose potential so let's see what we can do with this that would make a most excellent window hmm Always wanted a reason to use this. <laughs> 